Hey everybody, this is JR2576 with another video. This time I'm covering doorways and persistent variables. And there's a few other pointers I'm going to cover as well while I go through the tutorial. So if you've seen this before, uh, my previous tutorials all revolve around the same area, same scene. So that way you can see how everything interacts with each other as I progress through all the tutorials that I want to do. The first one was on how variables work. There will be a link above if you're interested in to see how I use variables in different ways. Alright, so when I created this scene, I placed my puppet here. This will become viable uh, when I show you some stuff later on. So I just wanted to point it out now that this is where my puppet is. Because when you spawn into a scene, you always spawn wherever you place your puppet. Okay. I have multiple doorways. So we're going to go around. I have, this is an entrance. Now, this is the entrance that I used for level linking the beginning of my dream. So this is the first world that I will come into in my dream. That's why I put a 1 on the floor and it's called Logic Tutorial 1. So on this door, I have it set to entrance. You can have an entrance, an exit, or a two-way. There is also a wiper style, which does like the transition. You can set it to whatever you want. Set the color. There's some other stuff as well. And you can also make it a checkpoint, which I have selected here. All right, so this is my entrance into the scene when I start my dream. This one is another entrance, which I have hooked up to scene two. This one exits from here, and it brings me into scene two. And what I did is trigger zone, which is right over the pad. Once I'm in the trigger zone, which I have set to detect labels, the label that I'm detecting is friend. My puppet is set to friend. So when I'm in the trigger zone, it detects me. It's going to appear the text, press square to exit. So when I'm in the trigger zone... And I press square, I have an AND gate, it will activate this door. Now, the controller sensor I have set to remote controllable. And then the square goes into the AND gate. So trigger zone, and I press square, it turns on this doorway, which is an exit. With the transition. Okay. This one is a two-way door. Same thing, trigger zone. With the text, trigger zone, and the control center, the control sensor to an end gate. Turns on the two way, which I have set for two way. So that's my first scene. I have three scenes altogether two and three. Three I will cover later on. So on scene two, note again, my player, my puppet is here. This is where I placed my puppet when I made the scene. I have this doorway, which is the entrance, which is from scene one. So when I exit scene one, this will be my entrance. I also want to note this ball with the arrow. So when my play, my puppet leaves scene one and enters here, he'll be facing this way because that's the way the arrow is facing. It's good to note. So if I'm turning, if I'm going into a new scene, I don't want this arrow facing backwards. I want it to face the direction that the scene progresses me through. So I want to face that way. Okay. This is the exit, 
I know it says enter, but it's set as exit. Same as before. So that way I can exit scene two and go into scene one. And this is the same thing as before. And this is the two way. Trigger zone and square activates the door. All right. So once you make all your scenes, then you can make a dream. So this is my dream. I have scene one, scene two, scene three. This is the entrance for when you start your dream. Which goes into the entrance that I had in the top left corner. These are the multiple doors. So I have my two-way going to the two-way. Um, exit. Entrance. Same thing here. I have an exit from scene two to enter into scene three. Exit scene three back into scene one. And all you got to do... Is after you place in your scenes by going in here and then you can pick on your scenes and it shows you all the different doorways just press R2 to link them and it links them together make sure you save something else I want to note um, if it's your own dream, you can set your scenes to auto update. So if you make a change in scene one, when you go into the dream to edit, it will automatically update. And then you would save it as well. So I'm going to show you the stream. So like I said, this is where my, play, my puppet spawns because this is where I place them within the scene. This is the entrance. This is where I have the entrance um, for when I enter the dream. But it, like I said, it still spawns you where you place your puppet. Now, if you remember right, I had this set up as a checkpoint. So if I die, that's where it puts me. My player is facing that way because if you look at the door... That's where the arrow is facing. So that's why he faces that way. So now these are my three other doorways to level two. This was the entrance from level two to level one. This will exit level one and bring me to level two. So I'll do that because I'm in the trigger zone. It brings up the text. Now I'm in the trigger zone and I press square, it will activate the door. And it brings me here. And if you notice, it spawns me here. Because this is where I placed the puppet in the scene. Right. So now this is the entrance. This will bring me back to scene one. And there I am. Now, the problem with this, which I'll cover, is say you're doing an RPG and um, you link multiple scenes together, but you want to go back and forth between the scenes. So imagine I'm in the beginning of my scene right here. I play for 10 minutes, I get through the whole entire scene, I get to the end. There's an exit door. All right. I go in, it spawns me at the beginning of scene two. And then say, I want to go back to scene one again. When I go back, it will spawn me all the way in the beginning again. So I would have to fight or travel through the whole thing again just to get back to scene two. I will show you how to fix that when I start covering persistent variables. Same thing with the two-way door. 
So brings me in, puts me here, right where I start, right where I place my puppet within the scene. And if I go back through the two-way, same thing, brings me back to the beginning. So those are the three doorways and how they work. Um, but like I said, the problem is that you don't want to start over the scene again when you're tra if you're traveling back and forth. You can also use the exit to end your scene. So say you design a cinematic, you design the whole cinematic. At the end of the cinematic, you trigger an exit. It will exit the scene. So that way the player doesn't have to manually exit. It will just kick him out to the, the thumbs up and the, the continue button. Brings me back here. There we go. So now, what I want to show you is this door. This is another two way door I have set up. The difference with this doorway, and I will show you, it's a two way door from scene one to scene two. It spawns me right in front of the key the pad. So the same thing. So I entered the house. I do what I want in the house. I want to exit back. But if you remember right, it's going to spawn me all the way in the beginning of the map again. Not this time. This time it spawns me right outside the door. Well, out, right outside the pad again. Instead of spawning me over there. Just like over here. So I did it this way, it spawns me here. Then I go back. It spawns me over here again. So I'm going to show you how I did this. Oops, sorry. So on my puppet... I have a teleporter. This microchip is similar to the microchips that were over here with a different... I know there's extra logic and I'll cover all this. Uh, this is more for persistent variables. So, same as before, I'm in the trigger zone turns on the text display. I'm in the trigger zone and I press square. It activates the gate. Now especially if you're having if you have multiple two-way doors I had to start using persistent variables. Okay? So I have door variable. I named it door. I have it set to persistent dreams. So we're going to recover this. I'm in the trigger zone. Text, trigger zone, and square. It sends out a signal. The signal will open up the doorway. The two-way door. It will activate that door. The AND gate will also turn on my variable modifier. Now, this variable modifier is looking for the variable called door. It sets it to 1. Uh, I covered a lot of this in my other tutorial as well with the variables. If you need further explanation. So that's my variable modifier. So... When I'm in the trigger zone, I press square. Not only does it open up the door, but it sets the variable to 1. This is the variable, door. I named it door. Persistent dreams. Current value. 
So it's going to set the current. It's going to set when I do this. When I'm in the trigger zone, I press square. It will open the door and set this variable to one. I have a calculator. So when A is equal to B, so when this is 1, A becomes 1, B is set to 1. So when A is equal to B, it sends a signal to an AND gate. The two-way door, when I activate it, which I will by being in the trigger zone and pressing square, it turns on the door. So the door will be activated. When it's activated, it sends out a signal to an AND gate. So I have the calculator, and when this is activated, hooked up to an AND gate. When this, when both signals are true, it turns on a tag. The tag I have set for entrance. Space, scene space transform. This gives out the position and orientation. So I have the tag here. So it gives you the, the position. Z is forward, X is to the side, Y is up. All right. Now on my puppet, I have the teleport. Match target position, which is entrance, so that's what I labeled the tag as. Match target orientation, which is the entrance. So if you look at my character here, with the teleport, Z is forward, X is to the side, Y is up, the same as the tag. Just make sure the tag, this ball, the center, is about the same spot as his waist because if it's not and it say it's too low when he spawns in because it matches it he'll come in to the scene crouched and then stand up if it's too high he comes into the scene high off the ground and then falls down until he hits the ground so you want to try to get around the waist so that way when he comes in he's still stand he's just standing he's not crouched or he's not Falling. All right. So what this is going to do is, I have it set up in scene two, the exact same way. So I'm in the trigger zone, text, and square. Activates the door, and sets it to one because this is door number one. So when it sets it to one. It makes the variable one. When one is equal to one, sends a signal. When this is activated, sends a signal, which will turn on the tag. Once that tag is turned on, I will teleport to that tag because my teleport is always on. So it's always looking for the tag, but since the tag is off, it won't teleport to it. But the minute that the logic works and it sends a signal to this and it turns it on I will teleport to here which is right here I have the second scene doorway set up the same way so that way it knows this is door one if I had multiple two-way doors it's a good way to differentiate between the doors so that way you can come in from one door and then come back and be in the same spot. Where like let's see, go into okay. So I'm gonna come over the square and it puts me here. See, it's the same thing. Trigger zone, control, turns on the gate, sets to one. The door variable is one, so that way it knows.
spawn me here because it will turn on that tag. Now, the key thing to persistent dreams and variables is you need a duplicate of the variable in each scene. So, I have door here variable, and in scene one, I have the door variable. Both selected to persistent dreams, both named the same thing. That's how it's able to keep the information from one dream into the other. It has to have a duplicate variable and it has to be clicked on for persistent dreams. Show you again. So when I go in here, it brings me here because it knows that this is door one. And it sets the variable, so because the door gets activated, because it carries the one over from the other dream, and vice versa, it'll be the positive signal with the doorway, and that's why it spawns me here, because it turns on that tag, and I teleport here. I hope that it, uh, it helps you guys understand it. Um... Yeah, so because it's set to one and it goes in between each dream because it's persistent, it's, it's a positive signal. And only when I'm activating the door will it go through the AND gate and turn on the entrance, which will teleport me, the tag. <clears throat> Where if I had another door, another two-way door, I can have... It set it to two. So when the variable is two, then it would spawn me from that, from door number two. I have it just set here as door number one. Right. Now, more on persistent dreams. So, like I said, this is all part of a previous tutorial. This will spawn my three coins. This will turn the ball green and change the value of the coins to three. So I'm going to pick these up. And if you see the number in the corner of the screen, it goes up by three because I picked up the coins. Now, if I go back. Into here. If you'll see. The ball is still green, and I still have the value of 9, because the variables that change that ball green and the variables that add the numbers together, I have set to persistent dream and duplicates in each dream. So same thing here. So let's say, because it's the same, see the coins, I'm going to change it to red. Oh my. It's a value of 2. So now I'm at 15. Go in there. Look, it's still 15, and the ball is still red. Because I set those variables to persistent dreams. All right. Also, in the previous tutorial, I had shown you guys how to make a health bar and a mana bar. So I press triangle, and it subtracts from the mana every time. That's part of the variables as well. If you go to the other tutorial or explain all that, there will be a link above. So right now I'm at 70 mana. 15 coins. The ball is red. The ball is still red. I still have 15 coins and my mana is still at 70. And like this, this will replenish my mana. So I can make my mana 80. I can also buy this. Uh, this is all in one of the soils. So say I want to make it blue. It's going to cost me one coin. So it's going to deduct the one coin and change the ball blue. 
There you go. Change the ball blue, deducted a point, and down to 14. Now, if I go back, the ball is still blue. I still have 14 coins, and my man is at 80. Because all the variables are set to persist. And I will show you. So, the ball. The ball with the variable persist. Okay. And this is in scene one. Uh, what was it? The coins. So I think I put it in here. Yep. The, this number represents the value. Persistent dreams. And like I said, it always has to have duplicates in all the scenes that you want the variables to carry over. Um, on my player. The mana. My mana pool. Is 80. 80. Persistent dreams. Okay. That's why everything carries over. Now, something else I've seen a lot of people talk about. Um, is health. So, in my previous tutorial with the, with the health and the mana bar, I showed you how to make a mana bar, which you could use as a progress bar, and you could use it as health. But what would happen is if you actually made a mana bar, but substituted the health for the mana, you can't use the, the, the health modifier and the health manager. You couldn't use you couldn't use this. So like, this manages my puppet's health. And this modifier takes away health when I step on the red. You would have to rig that all up with all different variables and have them all different persistent dreams. I, I found a little bit easier way, so you can still use the health manager and the health modifier. So that's where this other stuff comes into. So on the health manager, there is your current health, your current health, sets the health variable, whatever number is my current health. So it's 100, it sets it to 100, see, 100, it'll set when powered on. I power this on with a wireless receiver, which I labeled, which I have looking for a health set. And I have it set for scene. So that way it always transmits. And that's where the rest of this logic comes into effect. All right. So same as before, um, from the AND gate, so when I'm in the trigger zone and I press square, it'll turn on the gate, it will change the variable, and it sends a signal from the transmitter, which I labeled headset, so when that, it'll send the signal to here. Once that's, this gets the signal, it sends it to here which turns on the variable modifier, which will set it to whatever my health is currently. This is the health variable. Persistent dreams. Now, it's set it to 100, because I have 100 health. Alright. This is where it gets a little weird, because it's a, a lot of math. I had to have two calculators. So the problem with the health manager is it goes from 0 to 100, but in signals, it's either 0 or 1. 1 being 100, 0 being dead. So what I had to do, it's 100, so I have 100 health. 
I have it subtracting from 100. So if I was to go in here and say, if this was something different, um, say my health was 90, it would be 90 minus 100. And then it would output that number. That number would come into here, which would be negative uh, 10 divided by negative 100 because it's like a hundred percent so on the health let's see, can I, let's see. so say I'm going to go into play mode so say I was to lower this and I step in the trigger zone Oh, there we go. So now it set it to 93.1. 93.1 minus 100. Gives you 6.9. Negative 6.9. Negative 6.9 divided by negative 100. Is plugged into a health modifier. So now, if you remember, this is negative 6.9. It comes up as negative 6.9. So that will do the amount of damage that I'm missing. So it rounds up, so that would actually be a 7. And that's why I have 93 health. Because the difference between 93 health and 100 health is 7. But like I said, because of the health manager being between 0 and or a hundred because it would be zero as a signal or one as a signal you have to divide it so it does like the hundredths with the decimal points and stuff like that so that's why it's negative 6.9 which would be seven so I'm missing seven health so what that does is when I enter this doorway it sets the health variable because it sends a signal to here, which will turn this on, which takes in the amount of health, 93.1, they'll say I have. Sets this to 93.1. I do the math to get, to break it down by a hundredth, and then to make sure it's a negative. So that way it removes what I'm missing, which is six, well, seven. It would round up to seven. I have it set per hit in the zone. The zone is right here where I spawn because that was where I had the tag. See, because that's where I'll spawn. So what happens is sets the variable to my current health. It opens up my doorway. I spawn here. And once I spawn, it also turns on the health modifier, which is set for per hit. So it's only once in the zone that's in front where I spawn. And to detect me as a friend. So this is going to input how much to subtract, which would be 7. So that way I'm 93. And this would turn it on when I teleport to it. So I'm going to show you. So I'm in scene one. Let's take some, take some damage. Scene 82. I'm going to go in here. 82. My health stayed the same. Before I go back, 
74. When I can heal myself. Whoops. So, uh, there you go. 100 health. 100. That's because I respawned. Eighty. Eighty. Alright, so that's how that all works. This will teleport me to where I came out of, depending on what door I have it rigged for, which is door one. And this will do all the health. Like I said, health is persistent. And remember, you always have to have a duplicate. Now, I remember telling you I had the other doorway to level 3. Show you that. Oh. There we go. I'm reset my progress. So, this is my first level that I made, which I made originally with uh, my first tutorial. When I go into 2, all I did is remix it and bring it all over because, like I said, it has to have duplicate variables. So that way it was just easier for me to remix it. Um, you can also do it with your puppet. So if you put variables on your puppet, I would... What I personally would do is after you made your puppet, select them and save them as a new creation. So that way you can update him and just bring him into all your scenes. Because when you travel from one scene to another, it's whatever you have in the scene already. So everything's all the same. That's how come it all interacts the same together. But now this one is to the third level. The third level, I literally did create a scene, it gave me the gray platform, and then I saved it. That's it. I didn't add anything to it. So when I go into it, that's that's it. There's no puppet because I never added a puppet. There's no variables. There's no nothing because I added nothing except for these two. This is the entrance to bring me into this scene. And this is my exit. I made the exit grabbable so that way I can show you because I have no puppet, it doesn't do anything. You actually have to have doubles of everything. That's why I said it's easier to make it as a creation and just import it. And this will bring me back one. All right. I hope it wasn't too complicated. Uh, I tried to explain it the best I can and cover all the different aspects. Um, of how the doorways work um, and that if you enter a doorway it will always spawn you where your puppet was placed within the scene so make sure you know that um, and then when you do come in from an entrance which direction your puppet will be facing then I showed you how to use the tags and the teleports to make sure you teleport to the door that you just came from using variables and then the persistence of variables whether it's using it to teleport you to a door between the doors that you go in between for each link of the scene, or if you have currency or something you did somewhere in scene one, that way it says persistent. So if you go back to scene one, you already had it accomplished, it, it won't reset it. I also showed you how to do a progress bar or a mana bar and how to keep that persistent. And also how to do health, which is I know a lot of people have asked for about the health one. Um, if there's any questions, feel free to ask. I'll try to explain it the best I can. Or if too many people have issues, uh, I can try to make it a little bit more simpler. Um, and then, like I said, make sure you check out my other tutorials if you're still unsure about variables. Or if you want to know how to do the coin counting. Uh and deduction or a menu these are different types of menus no, I'm going to show you that real quick uh, so 
this. Okay, and then here, to square to deposit one. This is actually a side menu that you can go through. You can buy and change the ball. So I press square, it turns, it takes away one, makes the ball blue. This is an in scene menu. Same thing. So I can buy the ball red. Red takes away two. This is different. Left and right changes it. And it just changes the color. There's no currency involved. And then I have the health bar and the mana bars. Take away over time. Regenerate over time. Regenerate as a pickup. And disappear. Collective. And then magic. Collective. Or regenerate over time. And I also had it show you how to create the health bar and the mana bar. And those are all my previous tutorials. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching. Hope I answered a lot of you guys' questions and helped you out.